for rain till That's for my Saturday, Saturday or something. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think. Call the finance committee to order here at 7:30. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out on a on a wet rainy day. Um, so the agenda is as stated here. Um, it said we're going to start off with the um, instructional motion, but I'm going to shuffle things a little bit because I think we've got some members from the retirement uh, board here, so we can start with that. But before I do, um, just a reminder: we've got the finance forum next week. I imagine tonight we'll we'll just kind of recap the agenda for that and chat about that a little bit. And I also want to say one other thing before we get started. Um, this is a, it, it technically ended at sundown, but this is a Jewish holiday, um, Yom Kippur. And this meeting got scheduled. I know technically the, the holiday is over at sundown, but in the spirit of it, um, maybe in hindsight, we wouldn't have scheduled this meeting at this time. And that's entirely on me. I should have caught that. Um, and I apologize for that. And we'll be certainly aware of that going forward. Um, I just wanted to mention that. So. Um, but I think, again, so if we have the retirement board here, maybe we can start with, with that, and then we'll take up the instructional motion next. Before we do, any, any comments or any questions from the committee? Does that sound good? All right, Sharon. Okay. So, um, as virtue of my position, I want to introduce you to the other members before I get started. Great. So this is Steve Gentile. He's on the board. Hi. Um, uh, um, Colleen Hoffman is the administrator, and Carol Roberts, and the one member who's going to be here with us. So as you know, we are looking to uh, seek um, income um, endorsement or um, support for an article that's going to be at November town meeting to increase the full base for retirees from $12,000 to $14,000. The way it currently works is that the board can award up to a 3% COLA each year up to the COLA base, and the base is $12,000. That base has been in place since 1990. And there is a foot um, was passed in 2010 that allows us to ask how many to increase it in increments of $1,000. So you'll see that the first um, page that is related to um, the retirement article is on page 49 of your packet, but I also have these here. You know, make it easier for yourself. And then I also have the notes of what I'm going to tell you, so you can reread this later if you want to think about what else. So on the first page here is just the letter from the board explaining that we have approved as a board um, a request to go to town meeting to um, we voted to approve a COVID based increase subject to town meeting approval. And the law is cited that allows us to do that. On the next couple of pages of the um, packet, and also the be in the bigger packet, but it's a bigger small packet, it's going to be easier. Um, this is where I'm going to begin. There are town meeting slides that we put together. So this basically talks about the same thing. So right now, we can get 3% of $12,000, which means that the maximum total that any retiree could expect to get is $360 for the year. And so we're looking to increase it to $14,000, which is like $420. Um, and that would go into effect July 1st, 2020, which is the beginning of this that is a town meeting approval. It requires a town meeting approval because the highest legislative body needs to approve that. So where's the base come in? It just seems so it's it's been placed in place by law that, that we have, you know, when it was put in place back in nineteen ninety seven or ninety eight, it was that was the base that was put in place and then I don't think that we even have the ability to change it until two thousand and ten. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so now 3% but only on the first 12,000. Yeah, so, so it's a very so small we, increase for a year. $360 doesn't even mm -hmm. scratch the surface of what a total increase looks like for most people. And these people now are on what I would consider some of the fixed income. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the reason for our request. On this slide, you actually will see on the bottom of the slide um, that we think you can break out of where our retirees are. We have 350 retirees 
62 of them have pensions that are less than $12,000. So unfortunately, those folks won't actually even see a benefit if they can get this passed. And then 18 retirees actually have a pension that's between 12 and 14,000. So they get some benefit depending on how close they are to 14,000. 134 of our retirees have a pension between 14,000 and 35,000. And 138 retirees have a pension in excess of 35,000. So what this slide kind of reveals is that 61% of our retirees have a pension that is less than $35,000. 65% have a pension less than $40,000. So we're not talking extremely large pensions here, and we're just kind of on the order of magnitude to give you that thought process, because it adds up quick. <laughs> it does. You will see at the bottom of the slide that it talks about how much this change would increase the appropriation to the town in fiscal 21, and it's a large number, and it tells when you're on the next slide, but it's 267,300. Big number. <laughs> if you look at the next page, you'll see the next slide, which talks more about the cost. <coughs> so, as we said, the pensions are pretty small. The average pension here in Reading is 32,191. And so approval of this change would cost, you know, would give them an additional $60 a year. But it will cost us, in fiscal 21 alone, $34,100. But we are nine years away from being fully funded. And the total change to the liability is $1.6 million. And the reason for that is every year they get that $60. And it's also going to increase our estimates of what pension will cost for our current, our current employees that will someday be retirees. So it, it compounds on itself. And so the total cost of this is $1.6 million. And we're nine years away from being fully funded. So of course, the impact of your year is going to be a large number because we're, not, we're so close to being fully funded. So that's how the 267000 comes into play. <coughs> so on the next page of your packet, I'm sorry, can you say that last part again, the, the, the 267 bucks. So basically, when the actuary calculated this out for us, she mm -hmm. basically said if you make $6 million, or $1,637,800. Mm -hmm. And because we're, 2020's um, assessment has already been planned. It was part of the last valuation. So we only had nine years that she could then change the funding schedule for us. So that $1.6 million has to be paid within nine years. And that's why, yeah. And so that's why it ends up being such a large number, even though your normal cost is only 34000 Because that was the assumption. That yeah, because we're trying to get fully change. funded by 2020. Yeah, so but some stake in the round, stake in the ground was yeah. fully funded the same day. <coughs> so the next page in your packet is the funding schedule that was approved by the board in collaboration with the town manager to figure out what's the best um, path forward. So every two years, we have an actual evaluation to determine what our liability looks like, what we have you know, for assets at that time, and then they redo our funding schedule. And we want to stay on target with our 2029 um, fully funded date because we also have OPEP as a huge liability sitting out there that's waiting for us to put more aggressive funding in that direction. So we're trying to stay on target. But every time we do the um, valuation, we have to consider um, improvements in our assumptions. So they'll, they'll propose a mortality um, table that's more up to date, and that's going to change your liability. And then they also had noted that some of our group four people were actually retiring earlier than she, what she had been projecting, so she was making a change in the assumption there. And then we felt that our investment return rate at 7.65% was a little bit high, and we wanted to bring it down to 7.5% to be more in line with where a lot of other um, retirement systems are. All those things combined create a, a larger out-of-pocket cost to the town, because on top of changing these assumptions and making the liability a little bit bigger, we also are assuming a lower investment return. And so that money comes from somewhere, and it comes from a higher assessment to the town. So what you see is in fiscal 21, we selected a funding schedule that goes up 21.27%. But as we discussed at the last meeting, um, the reason that we chose that was we were talking with Bob. He has some savings that could help fund this through health insurance. So that's the only reason we would be entertaining the schedule, is the fact that we could potentially be able to fit this in, make it work in fiscal 21, and based on what Bob had said, this is the schedule he picked, and so it's the schedule that we so this is just showing you what the, um, the board has approved for fiscal 21 as a funding schedule without any change to the COLA base. So we left it at the 12,000. And if you're reading this schedule too, 
you see the baseline down below it actually shows you where we were before so we had um, 7.65 percent as our investment return 7.5 so you can see the changes that made um, the changes to this schedule the next page is a letter from Amos, who is our actuary, and she explains the cost, the normal cost, the change in the liabilities for a change up to thirteen thousand, for a change up to fourteen thousand. So obviously, if we go to thirteen, it's a little bit less, somewhere in the arena of eight hundred thousand dollars for the total liability, changing one hundred and thirty-five on the um, annual or the fiscal twenty-one um, assessment. And then, of course, the numbers we've already presented are the 14, which is the 1.6 million, with a $267,000 change to the assessment. And the next couple of pages, you see that that looks like on the funding schedule. So the first page um, after that letter is the funding schedule for 13,000, and then the second one, schedule N, is the one with the 14,000. So it makes the assessment go up 25. The increase in administrative expenses. So we were trending. So we had a hundred and seventy-five thousand for all of the overall retirement systems expenses. So that's the things in the office, the, the staff, and we realized that that number was a little bit on the low side. So we increased it a little bit because we're actually so we it. I mean, that's so she's assuming yeah. a lot of things. So she's assuming. Um, what are, what are our administrative expenses going to be to run the retirement system? And so that's the salaries of your staff, their benefits, the office space, office supplies, all those things. And so we had had 175000 for quite some time. She goes, you're really bumping up against that. Let's increase it a little bit to 200000 just in case. And so that was the reason for the change. It's a small change, really. It probably had very little impact, but it was one of the changes that we made because the administrative cost, because each year our rent goes up in application. So. I'm sorry, what location are you talking about? So the retirement board used to be located in this building, but because of space issues, they moved to, to Haven Street, um, right near the train station. So, so, the, so the rent goes up there um, every year based on, is it the CPA? Yeah. So we have, you know, we, the costs do go up just because they're sharing. Oh, yeah, no, I thought they were here. Okay. Yeah, they used to be here. Oh. It's been only a few years. Okay. Maybe four or five years that they've been you know, in the new location. The next couple pages list every community in Massachusetts and where they are in terms of whole of a whole lot of more information, but we're really going to focus on whole of base. If you went through this list, you would find that there are only 25 of the 104 communities still at the original $12,000 full base. So we're kind of in the minority. 76% of the communities have made some change upward on this $12,000 full base that went into play in 1998. So if this was information before you so that you could see where all of our neighboring communities are. One of the other things to note by looking at this is we have 22 communities, I believe, that we consider to be our peer communities. And out of those 22 communities, only two of our peer communities are still at the 12,000. That would be Andover and Shrewsbury. Everyone else has moved up within $40,000. Nobody really is at this 12,000 range anymore, very few. So that being said, the next set of information I want to present to you is, you see this in your um, packet. This is a newsletter that goes out to all retired municipal and state employees. And there's some information I thought it would be beneficial to point out. In this, they actually show you the 104 communities, and it gives you just where they are for their COVID base. But on the third page, is this the third page? The fourth page. There is an article in here, second page, or it's still on the 1997 COLA base. And in this article, it talks about um, over the last year that 10% of the communities in Massachusetts made a change to their COLA base and increased their COLA base. And then it makes a comment that regrettably, several of the best funded systems in the state remain at the original COLA base of $12,000, which was set 21 years ago. And then there's a quote in here from their president, um, Retirees Association, Frank Valeri, and he basically kind of points out the top three systems, but we're actually on the list. <laughs> Shrewsbury, Concord, and Winthrop are certainly in a position to adjust the COLA base in an effort to give back to their retirees some of the asset growth they have experienced over the last two decades. 
I think it's about time to share some of the gains with their experience, with they've experienced, especially since these systems are making the investment returns on member contributions. So keep in mind, you know, back 34 years ago, when the, the town wasn't setting aside money to invest towards people's pensions, the member always was. Every time they got paid, it was being taken out and it was being invested. So their, their money has been there the longest. And de definitely some of these earnings that we enjoy to get our funded status is coming from member earnings. It only makes sense that at some point we would give some of this money back and, and increase this quota on some level. And so that's why we respectfully request that you support this article because we feel like there's a lot of things at play here. We're basically in the minority. Only 24% of all communities in Massachusetts are still at this $12,000 pool base. We have retirees with very modest pensions, the average pension being $32,000. So when you're on a fixed income, I think that this pool of being given to $16 or 21 years is not helping much. I don't even think it scratches the surface. Only two of our other peer communities, communities we consider to be most like ourselves, are still at this polar base. And a lot of these earnings that we received on this money came from money that our members put in. And these, these retirees, they devoted their career to working for Reading. It just feels like the right thing to do. Any questions for me? Thank you, Sharon. Um, and just as a, uh, it was two years ago that we considered this, was it? 2015, four years ago. It was around the time we started talking about the override. It was four times. Was it four years ago? Right, we, we basically tabled it. We tabled it because there was did. no way that income, income couldn't support it, given what we had going on with the proposed override, and so we tabled it. So we didn't even ask Tommy back in 2015. Um, just out of curiosity, the 2029, is that based upon state, or is that based upon the projections? We're mandated to be fully funded by 40, so we're ahead of the game. Okay. But we also have a very large OPEP library that needs to <coughs> So you'll see that sharp decline in 2030 mm -hmm. from the 11 million down to like two or three million. And that gives a lot of flexibility in the budget come 2030 because you can actually redirect some of that funding towards OPEP. It might give us more freedom to do more things within the operating budget. There's a lot of motivation to do this and keep us on task so that we can actually have that flexibility in the future. So, and, and this is uh, this is a little bit more uh, to that scheduling. Um, you said looking at the peer communities. Do you know the percentage of those peer communities that are paying it off before 2030? Because looking at on. If you look at um, <coughs> the listings here, you could probably pick, pick them out. out. Yeah. Yeah. So it basically tells you so where I, they are. Um, I did it. So it wasn't something I was looking at to tell you, but it's definitely here in your. It's only market. 26. It's 24 percent of yeah. all of the communities of 105 communities that are paying it before 2030. So that includes 2029 and earlier. So of those, and and without knowing what you use as an equation um, for the peer communities, um, I'd be curious to know, because some of these are pushed out pretty far, uh, 2036, 2035, and these are the ones that are 17,000, 16,000, 15,000, 14,000. One thing 14, I think to mention is kind of a good thing to you guys. At, at the back of this um, colored one here, there's the chart that shows you all the peer community, uh, all the communities that still are at the 12,000. And some of the ones that are at the 12,000, uh, I should have mentioned it, some of the communities that are, are highest funded in the state actually are still at the 12,000. So that's why the, where the criticism comes from. So look at Lemonster, Shrewsbury, Concord, Winsburg. They're really out there, high funding, they're ready. I'm actually, Lemonster is fully funded now. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're basically kind of pointing their fingers saying, well, they kind of did that by not providing a fair cola, <laughs> you know? Yep. So, the, so they're being criticized for their staying there for so long. And, you know, for 21 years to get a $360 a year cola, that seems really <coughs> close to me. I mean, that just seems like, mm -hmm. it just seems wrong. I mean, in fairness, Lemonster also has the most conservative, you know, investment return assumption, I think. Oh, yeah, that's so, all part of so I, I think that suggests a very strong commitment to paying off their their uh, pension obligations early is probably part of that as well. Um, can, can I just make sure I understand the mechanics? So 
Um, at the 267, I think the number was figure. Totally get where that comes from. We've got to get by 2029. The, the so the actuary looks at the you know, yep. so when we meet with the actuary every two years, some assumptions yep. have changed, and we talk about what would it cost us to increase the public base. That always is part of the conversation. And so when she does that, she does the calculation of increasing everybody by that $60 a year. So the assumptions of what it would cost for them to be retired for their length of retirement. She's actually going to have to add money to that to get to those numbers. When she does that calculation for us, for the current retirees, for the current employees, she came up with a figure of $1.6 million to cover all of it. And we're nine years away from being fully funded, and so it gets spread over a shorter period of time. And so we've got to be fully, if we're going to be fully funded by 2029, we have to kind of spread it over a shorter time frame. It's not like we've got 10 or 15 years to, or nine years, because 2020 is already etched in stone. Um, the, we're already following the funding schedule for 2020. So. so totally understand that part. I'm thinking about what happens post-2029. So to get to 2029 is about paying off unfunded obligations that we've already accrued, right? Beginning in 2029 or after 2029, we'll essentially be paying as we go for new liabilities that are created for future pensions. But those liabilities also will be impacted, obviously, by these COLA adjustments, mm -hmm. to be clear, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And given that the, uh, the mandate was for 2040, refresh my memory on why the 2029 is the, the target. Could well, that it's, been the, it's been, it's been the, the date that's been out there for a long time, and we hesitate to push it up further, knowing that the OPEB liability is so there. large, it's not mandated to be funded, but you don't know when it will be. You don't want to really have that budget crunch when the state decides, you know what, we're going to mandate that you fund that like the pension, and then you're in a real spot. So I feel like we want to get this paid off sooner rather than later knowing. And we are putting money towards OPEB, but we are not able for the general fund to fully fund our annual required contribution. We're putting in like 600000 It needs to be like like 2.6 um, every year to get there. So it's one of those things that you know that you've got this large liability that eventually they're either going to make changes so that it reduces that liability or they're going to ask you or mandate it for us to fund it. The quicker we pay off our pension, the less pain that will cause when it comes down the road. And who knows, it may never, but at some point they decided the pension was a big enough liability that they would mandate that it be funded by a certain date. So it's one of those concerns that and we don't we don't make these decisions on the funding schedule without you know involving Bob in the conversation of what can we afford you know what's the best path forward. We didn't just pick the schedule that we had, but this whole thing has been out there for a while. There's something looming in our mind that feels like we need to rectify. It feels like we need to do something to give back to these retirees who devoted their career to being ready employees. Give them something a little bit more fair than three hundred. Sure. Uh, kind of related to um, <clears throat> some of these funding schedules, you know, we've kind of uh, married, you know, the um, the twenty what we're doing in twenty twenty nine and the OPEC after that. Are there similar stats, or like are, are most peer communities in the same position that we are? Where I think we're in a better position than a lot. Um, the OPEC. You? Yeah. You mean a pension or, or both? Like, you know, again, so we, we, you know, we're kind of, you know, tacking to get to 2029, and then we're in a position to start to look at, you know, again, prepare for that piece of it. Mm -hmm. And when you look at all these kind of stats on the peer communities, it kind of only just looks at the pension piece and not, it, like, are they also looking at that too, or do I are mean, there? I remember doing a survey a few years ago about what are other communities doing regarding OPEB, and we were kind of ahead of the curve, putting money aside, whatever we could, even though we couldn't fully fund our annual required. So every two years, an actuary comes up does the same thing for OPEB. They say, okay, here's your employees, here's your retirees. What's it going to cost to fund all of their benefits within retirement? And they do that same kind of calculation that they're doing for the pension. And they say, okay, we'll give you a 30-year schedule. And we can't pay the amount that they're asking us to pay for the 30-year schedule. So every time she comes out, it's another 30-year schedule. We're not making a lot of headway. And so it, it, we know that that's an issue, and we are kind of ahead of the curve in a lot of ways because we started putting money aside a lot sooner than a lot of communities. When I reached out and did a survey, a lot of communities were like, we're trying really hard to get fully funded the pension and we'll worry about what's out there. Some of them weren't even putting anything um, into the OPEB, but it is growing, and it's a large liability, and since they've made changes that that liability shows on the face of your balance sheet in full, <laughs> 
it really glares at you. It makes for a very ugly balance sheet. So, um, yeah, so I think it's become more of a pressing issue that people are looking at and we need to get there. And I think a lot of them are saying, we're not worried about that. Let's just get to the pension. Let's get the pension funded and then we can redirect. Because you see the huge savings that you see in 2030 once we're back there. A lot of communities are forced, though, to push it out, push it out, but they can't push it out past 2040. And we could have pushed it out as well. But knowing that we have that liability up there and we have the savings and health insurance, it seemed like the appropriate use of the funds. <coughs> that is an area I really don't know anything about. I keep saying, gee, I'm getting closer and closer. I better start learning more about the government. How do things like Social Security work? Do they have built in COLAs? They do have COLAs, but I'm not sure how they work. So I'm not oh, I, they, uh, I wonder if they have some limitation. Yeah, I was just no the curious because I tend to then say, okay, well, how how does I how do other the industries way. do it? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's something. Well, Twelve thousand. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, so it's the same. I'm going to guess that's the thing. My father gets over twelve thousand. Yes, so maybe it's the same. On the twelve thousand. Okay. But we can't do anything more than three percent for the retirees, so the base is at twelve. Right, but you're saying so, like your dad's in the same situation. It's the max at 12, three percent, or is it three percent? Cola for Social, for Social Security, Security? Yeah. whatever the cola base is on 12,000 for Social Security. Yeah. So, so just to um, venture off of what we're talking about with the three percent on 12, so now it'd be three percent on 13 or 14 is what you're proposing. Mm -hmm. um, so I. I and I don't mean to, to repeat myself. So w one of the things that I, I'm looking at here is of the liability that currently exists that we have, we're at, if we're looking at the community sheet, 45.4 million. There's only about 38, 39% uh, of all of the communities that are going to pay it off before 2029 um, that have a higher liability than we do. So that means the rest of them, that's 62% uh, of the communities that are paying it off before uh, 2029, have a significantly less liability than we do and also a um, higher assumption, or actually roughly around the same assumption that we have, so 7.5 or 7.65. Um, so I, I understand what's going on with the COLA. I fully get, um, you know, I need to update with the times and how everything's going. Um, my, I guess my only question would be the 2029 based upon the COLA, 2029 was the retirement or the OPEP liability. Now we're factoring in the COLA going from 21% um, 21 to 25%. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, big, that's a big leap, like we said, and that's a $200,000 in change mm -hmm. um, additional cost that we have to assume. Um, does pushing that now, have we included that into the review of pushing it out to 2030, 2031? What is the, what is that difference so that's by year? So the, the retirement board has accepted Schedule K, which is what's in your package <coughs> for just, you know, collaborative action with the town yeah. manager based on what's the reporting. So that is the actual funding schedule that's in place for fiscal 21. So we did, we did not choose to push that. We could in the next couple of years when we did another valuation if we felt that that was the direction we wanted to go, we could, you know, push out. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the sooner you pay off your pension, the more flexibility you have to pay off the OPEB and even within your operating budget. It's a big dip once you've got it paid off, so. Okay. Right, we don't want to, I can see maybe a year or two but beyond that, we don't want to get caught short on assumptions. Right. That all of a sudden the assumption change is now we're actually past 2040. So I, yeah. I definitely. I mean, if you keep looking at that, you yeah. get into that situation. Right, because we're still pretty aggressive with the investment return. But. Right. And just as a reminder, we talked about it last time, this isn't directly related to the COLA increase. But uh, once we move that 20 to 25% jump, we're, we can't go back. We're at that level. Right? We can't decrease yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gross number in more than one. <laughs> Any other questions, comments from the committee? Um, so intuitively, I'm going to just kind of think, talk out loud, or think out loud, I guess. Um, intuitively, I'm cl inclined to support this. Um, conceptually, I kind of don't find the argument that the towns 
had returns on this money over the years like terribly compelling to be honest I mean the, the notion of a defined benefit plan is that there's there's you know the retirees don't share in the downside right it's a guaranteed it's a guaranteed benefit um, so you know from a purely conceptual perspective like I don't well, know. let me ask let me yeah. mention this most people that are in your retirement system now fully fund their own retirement. So the people that you contribute towards, when you see that cost go down to like one, you know, two million or three million, that's really to cover those people who retire early, the people who are in hazardous jobs, like a police officer, a firefighter, a line worker. That's what the, where the town really is going to need to invest something into the retirement because they actually retire earlier and retirement longer. So there's more chance that they're not going to put enough money into the retirement system to earn the earnings to pay for the retirement. Most of the people that currently work here today, we're putting nine plus two into our retirement and that, that fully funds our retirement. Sometimes people don't get the full benefit of what they've put in. Sometimes you make an election and you say, okay, I'm going to do option A and then they die two months into their retirement and then that's the benefit that the town gets, you know, that the retirement system gets because they didn't actually collect everything they put in. There's an upside and a downside on both ends. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree with any of that. I guess I guess what I'm what I'm asking for is you know other than the two hundred and sixty something thousand dollar um, budget impact, you know the the four pages that are in here from um, what is this group called from the Voice of the Retired Public mm -hmm. Employee. You know, I mean, that group is going to have a particular position, right? That's so, true, that's other, true. other than other but than never, the, but uh, the thing about it, it's never changing the full in 21 years. Seems like aggressively. I, I, like <laughs> I, I let off with I'm intuitively inclined to support this for a reason, right? Um, I'm, I'm questioning what is the what what is you know what if anything is the cogent argument against a cola increase, other than the raw budget impact for the t for the current operating budget. Against it. Yeah, I mean, is there you know is there a cogent argument that, that folks make in these in these meetings against the cola increase? Because it's a budget question. Yeah, is there anything the, beyond? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, is there anything I mean, beyond? I would that? think the only thing is is that they can't fit it into the operating budget. That would be the only reason I could see somebody saying no. Um, I, I do feel like the argument of you know these systems are getting to the fully funded status with money that's member contributions being invested in, and they're not sharing any of that return with the retiree. Well, um, I'm an employee to take the other side. The argument, another argument against it is, for those that have high pensions, they don't need another couple hundred bucks. But unfortunately, the law doesn't allow you to distinguish yeah. Yeah, and draw a line somewhere. And that's who it benefits most. It's above twelve thousand. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, it, I don't know if that's where the line for high pensions yeah. is. Right. <laughs> 12, 000, but yeah, it probably benefits those that get the least amount of pension because the few hundred dollars is much more valuable. Yeah. Right. Anything else from anyone? Anyone else from the board? Anybody? All right. Um, are you ready for a vote? Take a motion. Which one article number is this? Oh, sorry. I already did yourself done. That has to be in the motion, right? You would. Is that nine? It's not, it is nine. It's on page 22 of the packet. Yeah, 22 in the packet. Um, move that the finance committee recommend Article Nine to town meeting. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Eight zero. <clears throat> So now we'll pivot and um, go to the uh, the instructional motion. This is toward the end. Uh, I feel like there's so much more. Yeah, 
it actually it's, it's between oh, it starts on it's page. between the retirement piece and and the and the warrant page, page 44 43 43 yeah 43 to 40 okay. oh, sorry that 45 45 uh, so this is instruction motion number 3 beginning on page 43 it's brief. Does everybody have a chance to read it? Examine authorized but unused debt and develop a policy regarding if and when it should be reviewed by town meeting and revoked or replaced by a new vote and a new authorization. Such policy would be presented in town meeting in November. So, yep. the only thing I want to say is that you have in the packet the current debt and capital policy that we just updated in August of 2018. Could, if you were going to do any kind of uh, a policy related to debt authorization, we'd probably put it in here. Um, also included in your packet is our current debt authorizations that are out there. And the only two out there that are older than a year old are the Birch Model Field Light, which is the subject of the instructional motion, um, and this MWRLA sewer loan that we never ended up meeting. And both of them were in the town meeting. So the piece that I think you need to decide it's necessary to have a policy. I do have an example policy from a student in the packet. They were the only ones that responded that said they had some sort of a sunset or death policy related to how long an authorization could be held there. So I'm not sure how you feel about what they have there. If you want to build on that, if you want to do something yourself, I want a policy, so that's where we're at. Well, I guess that's the first question. <laughs> do we feel that we need a policy or want a policy? I do. Because, I mean, I think it's, I think it's probably good practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, you know, we discussed this the first time, I don't know, however many meetings ago. Um, Bob and Sharon, you pointed out that you you already have the practice of reviewing it periodically, and, and that's why things are coming off in town meeting, that sort of thing. Um, my argument at the time, and I still sort of feel this way, is you know, you won't always be the town accountant, and Bob won't always be the town manager, and if we think this is good practice, then there's really no harm in codifying it. Mm -hmm. um, I like the Stoughton approach, which I, th I think is, I mean, that's that's an automatic sunset versus a policy of reviewing it, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it autom at least it reads like it automatically sunsets. The, the board of selectmen, whatever they call that board now, can grant a one-year extension, otherwise it has to be resubmitted for, for continued approval. Um, I think that's pretty elegant. Um, in the Stoughton version, they have kind of a bifurcated approach where if it's less than a quarter million dollars, it's a one year shorter time frame that it stays out there for. I mean, personally, I would say, you know, I think we could go with a simpler approach and just go with a more generous time frame, kind of regardless of the, um, regardless of the value of the authorization. But I, but I like the approach that it automatically sunsets and there's kind of a one-time opportunity to extend it if there are, you know, extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty elegant. So the thinking is, um, inst instead of splitting it three and four years or whatever, just have one one time frame with a, with a threshold. Um, Did you hear they've got two hundred fifty thousand? Yeah, I mean, I I think you could just apply it to any authorization, any authorization. right? And, but you, and you know, go with the more generous time frame, which is in their case two hundred fifty thousand or more. You would apply that to any authorization. It's outstanding. They have in here also that spending is completed within, I think, a certain amount of time as well. Mm -hmm. do, do, anything with the way this is written, do you see that as constricting or potentially a downside to that? I think the, the having the end date, depending on the size of the monetary value, might be constricting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. a larger larger town project, you know, yep. may go like several years. Rules for different, right. Less than two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Right. I think that's probably in recognition of the fact that larger projects are more likely to take longer, right? right. You know, right. building a school, yeah. for instance. I, I guess I yeah. just wonder how they yeah. arbitrarily pick that number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, so so an approach to that could be. I think. We yeah. Have yeah. I think. Fifteen years. I think the time frame here. So the the only. Uh, issue I see here is if we look at the 250,000 or more, it says uh, the last day of the fourth fiscal year, and let's say it starts that day, technically they only have a year to complete it. Mm -hmm. If you look at the second book, yeah. the second yeah. box, yeah, so it, it, day, it yeah. should be uh, the fifth fiscal year after being um, began, not 
approved, right? Mm -hmm. So, because if they approve it four years ago and it's a larger project, it might take longer than a year. Uh, that'd be the only. So I, I, I mean, you could say that. Yeah, I actually wanted. Right. Okay. Right. I actually suspect that they intended it that way, which is why I think uh, they have for the for the project completion it can be extended indefinitely versus, versus oh, okay, just yeah, the start date yeah. being extended it. for a year. Um, you know, which which I, I think would be a good good sort of approach to to emulate the you know the, the select board can extend the the start date by up to a year before it has to be reauthorized, but could extend the completion date indefinitely as long as it starts you know on time. Right. Okay. So that would that would address that concern, which is you know, you have a fifty million dollar project, ten right. twenty million dollar project, and you only have a year to do it. So right. it's unlikely. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, what if we even do something as simple as just requiring that we review what's out there? Because I do think some of what happened at town meeting that night was people sort of forgot. They're like, "Oh, right," and that that was out there. So. I was even thinking in the lines of having an annual review of what we have in the books at that point and what the plan is. As part of our budget process, maybe? I mean, that you go right into our debt capital policy. Right. Mm -hmm. It would be capital yeah. policy. Because yeah. yeah. then it would be something where if you saw something on the authorizations that you felt like. Yeah. It just reminds you that it's out right. there, and then we would have a discussion. So your structural motion reads, not, not that it's not binding, is my understanding. Mm -hmm. here too. Um, and use debt and capital to develop a policy regarding if and when she agrees by town meeting. What I heard, what you, what you, heard you say was proposed was a, a review by the finance committee instead of town meeting. And potentially we could present the town meeting no, too. No, I was thinking town meeting. town meeting, oh, okay. Yeah. What does that mean that we're reviewed by town meeting? I guess the only format for that is during the budget process. Yes. It can't be an article. Yeah, right. right. What would it be? be do, no, yeah. during the budget process. Yeah. Okay. It's a regular part of the budget yeah. process. Line. Whatever it is, D99 debt, yeah. by the way. By the way, right. Yeah. This is what makes up. Yeah. This is what makes up. Yeah. It's more of an so emphasis. So town and town mm -hmm. Right, I was thinking town meeting. I mean, of course, the last time. Anything that's going to determine anything to do with this question? I mean, it's definitely a lighter touch than the Um, I'd be a little cautious about having the select board review something that's, for instance, a school and deciding whether or not to do anything, whatever it is. It's really school committee. Oh, with the way that it's still in winter. Yeah, I'm a little surprised though. They went there, right? Yeah. It looks like that's the wording of the article. And if that's the authorization at town meeting, that's much stronger language than a FinCom policy, with all due respect. Mm -hmm. That's mandatory. That must be done. Yeah. And I would just that's be surprised that any school committee would say, oh, yeah, that's fine. The select board can decide what to do. Yeah. That's a good point. But I mean, the, all the select board is deciding to do is to extend the debtor author, uh, debt authorization, yeah. the borrowing against which still requires another mm -hmm. vote of town meeting. No. Yeah. No? No. Which one authorization happens once. And it's on the books as permission until yeah, rescinded yeah, okay. or executed. So no, yeah, but, but the but the borrowing the borrowing has to appear in a budget at some yes, point to get voted by town meeting. Correct. Yeah, sorry. It's not another authorization. Yep. That's right. All right. Yeah. So And that's to me the puzzling part of I mean I will go back to the high school renovation or whatever years ago. It was a long startup process because grants were applied for. You had to get the authorization early. And then that showed the MSBA seat. We have the support of the town. Then there was a long process to go through SBA, design, whatever. And I don't know how many years that was, but it wasn't quick. Um, but at some point, you know, you are spending money. You are borrowing money. Town mission, town meeting must have given you permission for that. The budget must have allowed that. Um, I think the concern was more, what if you're not spending any money at all? Mm -hmm. Then I want to know why, which is certainly a fair question. So 
So I think that's the part of the question here is it's going over the policy. Um, now that we talk about it a little bit more, I originally would say, you know, it's not the only place that has a policy that's not necessarily necessary because of the different boards that we have to review it. But now after we talk about it a little bit more, and we, we say, um, or we have different projects that consume portions of other projects um, that we've already gotten um, voted on to to, to do or they didn't get carried out, um, I, I, would, I would be inclined to say um, have a policy but not mirror it to a T to Stoughton, but something along those lines. So it sets a it sets a motion to begin a project. So it essentially keeps the wheels going on a project so it doesn't stay, um, it stays on the forefront of our minds to, to get the project done. I think uh, having a policy intact with, for that um, financially would be, would be smart. Um, so it keeps, and granted, we, we do this in our uh, capital uh, budgeting and, and balancing, but um, I think policy would be would be smart to have. One of the concerns I would have <coughs> is if you've authorized that and budgeted for it and it's not spent, right. you're not using money that you could be using for something. Right. So to me, that's a real concern, um, and especially if you're doing it for some period of time. You have debt schedule, it's, it's eating up a portion of the budget, and you're not doing anything. Right. And by the way, when you finally do something, it's going to cost future years more. Mm -hmm. So that part I totally get. Uh, and that's, that's one of the reasons in November town meeting we're taking away some of the debt spendings planned because we're not borrowing with the same pattern we expected. Because right. that money should be used for something. Mr. Rhodes. So I guess to, to Paula's point, uh, wouldn't the policy just simply have to be that I mean, I rely on staff input on these things. I'm not going to get down to the weeds of, of, of all of it. Uh, and wouldn't a policy simply be that the FinCom requires that staff give them an annual update? I think this came up at town meeting because there were things lingering around on the capital plan that nothing was happening with them and no one knew what was happening with them. And if there's some type of update, if the policy says there's an update, wouldn't that suffice? I, I wouldn't be very careful in putting numbers around it and amounts that the updates. I would, I would say everything, anything that's just lingering around you, you want an annual update on before we go to town meeting so that you're able to respond to it uh, why something's there. So how would that be in terms of would it be something just an information aside and just get the cash and then make a comment on it? Yes, no. yeah. It could be done during the town's budget process at the state <coughs> board and then to FinCom or just to FinCom, whatever. And then to town meeting if town meeting's interested, certainly. No harm. Yeah, I mean, it, the policy approach just doesn't feel like it has a ton of teeth, you know, from my perspective. And, the, the, the notion here that triggered this instructional motion was about the field lights. And the argument was the authorization was so dated that it wasn't accurate from a money perspective and it no longer, or at least was significantly different in terms of the actual project that we represent. Um, and so, um, you know, under those circumstances, it feels right to me to say, let's just sunset the authorization and get a clean one on, you know, clean one where we spend the money. Um, you know, putting it in a policy is an approach to do that. It just doesn't have a lot of teeth and doesn't really kind of keep us accountable to that uh, concept. And then on the point, Bob, about on the point about uh, the school committee and the select board and that sort of interaction, I mean, the select board already is approving the Warren article that authorizes the debt for a school building anyway, right? So there's already that. They're, they're approving it to go on the board. To go on the board, yeah. yeah. So there's already that interaction there. Yeah. yeah. But there are other methods of getting it on the warrant. True. They don't. True. It's real. Yeah, but they're not drawing value judgments on. I think that's that was the point. Uh, we don't. It's fair. Yep. I mean, they could theoretically. They could say we as don't. As a town, as a taxpayer, sure. <laughs> no, they could as a select board. They could they could yeah. decide that you know we don't agree that this should be on the warrant because yeah. we don't think we should build that school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. It's theoretically right, and I and. You know, I, I think either either version of this is probably equally as likely to happen with any given select board. So, yeah. um, I, I just I don't know if I worry too much about that concern personally. 
right. but I'm not on the school committee, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> right. <laughs> I got a lot of years in the schools ahead of me, though, so you know yeah, that's worth. <laughs> So, my hearing consensus that we should have a review process in Italy, and that seems to be what we're moving towards versus an automatic sunset. I feel like the two kind of proposals on the table are, yeah. or just a, a you know, just kind of a review process. And the question is, would that have sufficed given this this one instance that kind of came up? You know, would we have reviewed that and been reviewed and we were able to address it? Or, I, don't, I feel like it might have been. Or, or do we go with something with more teeth and it's been put with, with, with a dollar amount? Or maybe not a dollar amount, but just a sunsetting. I don't think we need the teeth. I don't think this happens very much. There's not a quantity of it. It's not an ongoing issue. If there isn't anything out there in any way, then there's no slide. Like. But I do like the idea of bringing it to the table Absolutely. so it gets yes. on a regular basis. Yep. So that, yep. again, it's like full disclosure. Why is that still up there? Right. Oh. Awareness. And I think I said this at another meeting, but in case some people weren't there, Sharon asked me, and I'm the one that said, no, leave it on. So you would just, we all would have had the discussion. I said, no, the rec committee's still working on something we don't know yet. Just leave it alone. And that doesn't mean that was the right answer for me, but that's what I said. But she asked, look, shouldn't we get rid of this? But I can see the merit of that because yeah. it's a project that town meeting voted and wanted. It just happened that we didn't have the numbers right to do it. When we actually put out the bid, it ended up being more than what we Right, asked. and I think town meeting support shifted. Yeah, time. and other things came up and it yeah. became right. a less of a priority. Yeah. So you thought, we'll just we'll revisit it when the time is right. And so it really is a real need still. It wasn't like we didn't want to do it anymore. So I think that was the where we got stuck was the, the idea that the project is still wanted. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of the right timing. So what I'm hearing, but keep me honest, what I'm hearing from the committee is a, is a lean toward just kind of a review, right? Yeah, but I think More that in, with in a slide for a time meeting, I think yeah, it's yeah, critical, yeah. not just selecting the income, but part of the budget process. Meeting or both meetings? Mm -hmm. so just, just the budget. Just well, the budget meeting. That's all I was thinking. So April, yeah. just <laughs> annual. So before we get to you know, what would this look like in wording, I want to make sure I'm gauging the sentiments of the committee properly here. Is that, is that, am I reading that right? Yeah, so I think just a review <clears throat> makes sense. So. Um, I'm, I'm only, yes, I agree that we need to collectively review everything and it needs to be brought to the town meeting so the town sees it. But on the same sense, part of this increase in budget has to do with this 2% sales increase every year to any construction project that you do. So the longer it sits uh, for five years, it's always going to be different. Every single time, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, contract has a 12-month at most, um, state, public, private, doesn't matter who it is. That's 1% for supplies. That's going to be 2% on labor every roughly six months. I was just going to say, we're seeing 3% so, every six months right now. So what makes us do the project? If financially, we have the money, but we don't logistically have it set it up. What makes us do the project to keep it, because it's going to happen every time? Um, you know, the unions, non-unions, doesn't matter, they're going to have pay increases, uh, supplies are going to go up, the new version of uh, conduit lines are going to come out, and I'd say this is what the code got updated in uh, 2021, you know, at, at what point do you say, hey, because um, I, I have a feeling it hasn't happened often, but if the longer a project sits in limbo, it'll start to happen more often. But don't you think us reviewing right. it is going to, be going to bring it into the conversation more so more likely? Yes, I think it'll it'll help with understanding with the town. I think the town will understand it better of what's going on, and if that's the if that's the, um, Impotence the end state, it happen. yeah, or it, not, that's the goal. right? If that's the goal, is just general understanding, then I think just general review during budget is, is great as long as that that's the end state that the, the town would like to see. So may I ask if we have a conversation with AG West, we're still talking about that authorization for that playground project from like five years ago. Would we then make a recommendation that it be sunsetted? What what would be the next step once we decide like this is yeah, silly? You certainly could. Okay. Well, I guess think about but then, then you can bring that up to get that <laughs> voted on, right? Right, I know. Yeah, well, then what are the tricky. teeth? Um, is that what you're going like let's well, say? Yeah, I'm thinking 
If it happened during the S December select board meetings or the January school committee meetings, you have time to get a warrant article on the April town meeting. It's like, I don't like what they're doing. I want an article on town meeting. And you as a body or ten taxpayers can do that. Right. But if you're doing it during your February, March budget reviews, it's too late for that mm -hmm. town meeting. You'd have to wait to November. Right. But you could certainly take action. I mean, you know, Be a warrant. If you told the, town, the current town manager, you would just do it. But could we do the review during financial forum? <coughs> yeah, any time. Yeah, that time is better. Right? Yeah, and then and then you know the review doesn't. Ha we don't have to necessarily reach a decision on whether we're going to recommend yeah. a warrant article in financial forum, but it might trigger. We want to ask mm -hmm. the school committee in the budget meetings. We want to ask sure. the select board in the budget meetings about those projects. So yep. just a little confused in terms of if you're presenting a slide at time and you're just showing your authorizations, would I be providing an update as to where they are on the project or might not necessarily? Um, I think, yeah, it is it is a little tricky in that all projects have different expected timelines. Some of them bake in the inflation they're talking about. We know that for 18 months we're not going to get to this point, whatever. So I have to think about Unanticipated what do you forward. really want to know and, right. and why. I mean, I think it would just be, from my perspective, it would be something like, Let's just make sure that we surface all the projects that have an no. outstanding authorization, no say issue. three plus years old, mm -hmm. that we haven't started borrowing against, and let's just go through status, right? You know, let's and let's have a discussion about that. I don't think that's going to be a ton of projects at any given time. Um, I mean, right before town meeting, I think it would have only been the lights, probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know the other one. The other ones. <coughs> There's two that are being rescinded. Oh uh, right, yeah. Um, so I mean, it's. Yeah, it's not, not likely to be a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. And then so procedurally, that would trigger us to have a discussion, potentially to engage with school committee, select board, town staff on yeah. the status of the projects, and then theoretically get a more article in time for April if it's appropriate. Yep. And get comfortable with that. So the review financial form. That financial form is yeah. of all uh, unused authorized all debt. Authorized but unissued yes. debt. I'm mm -hmm. the way to say it. Right. right. That's so far. But, but, but with a certain time aging, frame. with a certain time frame attached to it, right? You don't have to. I mean, in terms of only looking at something that's been up there. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of all the current debt. We've taken the stuff that was authorized in April, we've gone to the select board and asked for internal permission to borrow. Now, some of them have borrowed, some of them have not. Yeah. So you probably don't really want to know that stuff because that's <coughs> you know, what you mean. Agreed. That's not the spirit. Yeah. So maybe it is more than a year or something like that. Yeah, I, I don't care. Yeah, I mean the ones saying. that are out here after the rescinding of the two that we're doing in November, oh, yeah. were done at November fifteenth. Um, 2018, and they were done as phases, so that right. those could be up there for a while because it's in the sewer I and I project, so they actually oh, yeah. authorized all three phases at mm -hmm. once. So they're going to go from yeah. one to the next. They're going to use up the first phase, then okay. they'll borrow. So those actually could be out there for a couple of years because they're going through the first yeah. lot of money. Yeah. So MWRA does loan grant programs, right. so we'll get a 0% loan and then they grant us money. Right. And so they go through the first, you know, tier of money and then they go to the next. So that would be a quick one. This one's Just two like years old, but we expected money. that and it's yeah. based on the structure yeah. of these loan grants and you know, I mean, but that makes a lot of sense. But nothing here is actually over a year old right yeah. now. Right. Um, so. right. I, I, I don't even, how about the first iteration of the policy as we just like if mm. that's it like we just that's have a conversation right. about it and if we feel like things like are, it's laborious it's, yeah if it's, we're creating too much work then yeah or it's not there's not enough teeth in it then we can amend the policy if, i mean it came up because of that one just the one way it's just project the that project. just yeah. it didn't happen <clears> and right. it's still hanging yeah. out there everything else but it's quick enough for you to say, oh, you, like you said, it's a great explanation and great. We're not worried. Nobody's worried about the sewer projects. We want yeah. to have sewer lines. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the flip side is you're calling attention to things that don't necessarily need to have attention to call to them, right? Right. So that, that's, I mean, that was, you know, the, these MWRA examples, okay. you know, being, you know, one that for whatever reason we haven't commenced the internal borrowing yet, you know, I mean, there's. I'm happy to know that. It's not a huge list. <laughs> no, it, be worried about the financial yeah. forum. Yeah, well, I'm worried. Yeah, I'm worried about the financial forum. I'm worried about questions. opening a Pandora's box on something that's not yeah, unusual or exactly. inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I worry about this one exception now leading to 
inquiries that that are normal BAU. Like yeah. if, if this, like obviously, you know, again, in Deshaun's point, we have, you know, from a, it's more it's a different, you know, town manager, town account. Of, you know, that that's that's you know, kind of why you want to have this in place, but. Uh, you know, in, inviting you know questions where and in, in inquiries on things that aren't necessary, given this one exception, is the part where the, is the part of this that gives me pause. Yeah. My gut tells me people aren't going to make. I don't. I don't know what your gut tells you in terms of is, are people going to start picking this stuff apart. I. I don't think they I will. They, they tend to glaze to over. When they, <laughs> I, I. I. I don't feel strong. Yeah, pretty much good with whatever you want. I mean, transparency is never a bad thing. Well, almost never. Right, thing. just bring things to the forefront to make sure yeah, you continue you know, to have the support. Sharon, and right. probably Sharon. Sorry, Sharon. <laughs> write a memo to the financial form. You don't even have to discuss it. Mm -hmm. If it's not interesting, mm -hmm. it's just filed. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So we're lending a review. In a review, I don't know how we word this. Um, the town accountant shall provide an annual review of <laughs> authorized but unissued debt to the finance committee. The finance committee. That the, the fall financial form. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Financial form, yeah. just in case. Did you get that? No. <laughs> so I should provide what? <laughs> Jack is good. She didn't get past town account. <laughs> run, run a video, if not. Current town account. No. <laughs> That was good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you get that or not? Date. Most of it. Uh, financial <laughs> Did you get it? Most of it. Most of it. <laughs> That's impressive. Watch the tape. Yeah, it's a date. It's yeah. a date. 30 <laughs> mark when you watch the tape. Yeah, right. Oh, right. Yeah. One hour mark. Right. I did put it 30 mark. Right. Just to make sure. <laughs> Do we need to refine this now? What's, do we need to refine this now, or can we? You can look at it, look at it, and then decide next, uh -huh. next, next time. Whatever you next week. Yeah, I mean, we we next at week, financial actually. forum. Yeah, next week. If, yeah, because we. So I'm not going to present something at financial forum next week. You guys can send. I don't think there's any about. need because yeah. there's no so debt so after so November 10th. And that's going to be a long meeting, I think. So. Yeah. It won't so technically be in our policy as of the financial. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We're not going to get one. Next week. So we're doing it. So, right, so we'll review it then. Yeah. I think last time we even said, I mean, we generally agreed that we were comfortable coming back to town meeting we and did. saying mm -hmm. we're working we're on working policy. On we'll, you know, we'll have this addressed by the next budget in, meeting. In April. Yeah, yeah, in April. Yeah. Okay. Everybody comfortable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Review capital plan. Um, if you flip to page two, let me start. Um, the things that have changed since we last met, I think I pretty much captured them in here. I'm sorry, Bob, if it makes sense to do this. I don't know. No, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. The is fine. Okay. Um, our new growth number was short of what we budgeted and certainly well short of what I would have guessed. But as I thought back to January 1st, when it sounds up, a lot of the projects that we're seeing now really weren't in, in the ground. So in any event, um, new growth was less. Um, if, if we don't have free cash certified, and I, and I expect it will be, but you never know, I'm not comfortable asking for a lot of capital that we can't pay for, but asking for about the same amount of debt where cutting seems to make sense now. Now, if Sharon has free cash available for November 10th, which I, I expect, maybe we revisit how much capital we spend that night. And I don't, I don't like doing it at the last minute, but it's possible. There is nothing that was moved from November to the future that is a hardship for the town. Um, I guess the one item I'd comment on is um, yeah, HVAC uh, equipment at Coolidge was scheduled for next year. We seem to have an opportunity. I asked about moving up to November. The sooner it's done, I mean, if it's if it's approved at November town meeting, it will be done next summer. If it's approved in April, it may not be done next summer. And the sooner it's done, the more energy savings there will be. So this is light, you know, timing advantage. Uh, nothing else that changed. Right, and matters. some of the increases you're seeing in that kind of work. Right, right. Um, we did have to move up a uh, DPW piece of equipment that failed. That, you know, it would be helpful to get the approval in November and 
possibly add it before the end of the winter. Do it for plowing. Um, that's really all, all that happened. You saw the list of what changed in capital. Um, the other comment I'll have on capital is, is again, on purpose, I left some amount of unspent capital. I don't know if you intend to just discuss that uh, next week or tonight. Um, if you don't, um, you know, I, I will have to present a budget that meets your criteria and not leave that hole. And um, right now, I, in my last paragraph there, and I, I still feel this way today, we speed up the uh, second round of performance contracting. Um, I don't know. It's budgeted to start the debt service in two years. What we don't know is how long will it take us to get it studied and get results out and get a decision made. So even if we spend 300000 on next July 1st, I don't know that that changes the planned debt service. It just makes it, it, makes it for sure, we'll be done by then and ready. Um, the last process we went through was pretty intense. Um, I, I don't know what chapter of procurement we can go under, but something was available last time that I think is still open. We don't have to take the high, uh, lowest bidder. Mm -hmm. And that causes you to analyze stuff intensely. So Mary Delay uh, was in charge of the last one, and we had spreadsheets that were unbelievable to evaluate the different bids, mm -hmm. not just from a cost perspective. Um, so the, the process is a little longer than a typical capital approval or eventually debt. But that, that's the one thing I would add probably for the summer, uh, unless something else breaks and happens. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. But I, I think it, it gives the community an opportunity with, with you as their voices for what debt projects that aren't spoken for can we do we prioritize this first? Or aside from my opinion, what other capital expenses in the future can we move on? Mm -hmm. And from talking to um, the schools and the town departments. Again, there's no urgent need in the capital plan that really must be moved into next year either. It's not already there. And this things, again, I could cite advantages. Uh, you know, we could save money if we did this. We'd have less repairs if we moved this truck out of here. But, yeah, whatever. All right, you feel like you've gone through that list. And, you know, yeah, we're in our capital, generally speaking, our capital and our buildings are in really good shape. You know, there's a couple of exceptions. But you'll hear from the permanent building committee, the report on schools that they given the school committee is the school buildings are in really pretty good shape. So to last stop and um, step out of the um, advisory committee um, in the board to facilitate better communication among the different boards and committees. Um, they are working on a sustainability plan yes. at the behest of the select board. So a sustainability and renewable energy plan for the town. So, um, but they don't always have visibility to what capital projects are coming on down the line, which might directly fall into what they're trying to get into our sustainability plan. Right, so like this uh, school PUAC project um, we just became aware of. Um, and we want to uh, have an opportunity to have some input, if that's still possible. Um, it could, uh, definitely lead to some operating expense savings in the long run, uh, depending on what system is put in. Um, we don't, we would like to know like whether the vision is to just do a straight one-to-one -one replacement with the natural gas system that's already there, um, or whether there's an opportunity to look into alternatives like um, variable refrigerant system, which is a type of air-to-air -air, um, heat pump if any of you know what that might be. Um, it's, it uses electricity, um, so that would be a win for RMLD, um, shifting the, uh, where the money is going from yeah, the from natural gas, gas utility to our own um, light department, which would be good. Um, and BRF systems can have up to 30% um, savings uh, in terms of efficiency. Um, so that's not the only option, but of course the, uh, the costs on that sort of thing would vary depending on what's already in place. So um, I don't know, is it uh, gas-fired uh, baseboard or is it um, 
it's central air. If it's central air, then it might cost less to do a retrofit to move to electric. Um, and this would better position us for the future um, where we don't know what's going to happen with fossil fuels um, in terms of costs and um, availability in the long run. So there's something that occurred to me. How happy would the parents be if like the new HPA systems were like heat pumps that came with air conditioning? Yeah, and there's that too. They might, you know. One school would be happy. Many schools would be unhappy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, we have five coming out of mind, right? Yeah. So this is why we're talking about the planning. I mean, so. something like a, um, a VRF system could increase comfort um, and be more useful at the same time because you can uh, create different zones of heating and adjust for, oh, this is the sunny side of the building, oh, this is the shady side of the building, and equalize things that way. Um, you know, so if there's an opportunity um, for that to still be considered, um, other schools in uh, Massachusetts are doing this. Um, there's a school in Pittsfield that got a Mass CEC grant um, to convert from oil and steam, or oil and gas fired steam to BRF about a year ago. Um, that project costs 105,000. Um, I don't know what is currently budgeted for the Coolidge project. 25. Yeah, so obviously more, um, but they were able to get uh, get a grant. Um, Mass CEC, unfortunately, is not still offering those grants. They they just closed out there. There may be other opportunities. Um, and uh, Lexington. So, so the Climate Advisory Committee doesn't necessarily know what projects are coming down the line. They have a, a mandate to get a sustainability plan, and you know. We are being asked to recommend these projects as capital expenditures to town meeting, and we don't know if it's. I guess like, if FinCom is also going to support this like board mandate that we start projects start including renewable um, energy components, how would the I would that? say select board mandate is a bit strong. They haven't actually said anything yeah. yet, not to say they won't. That more capital planning and permanent kind of building versus FinCom. Um, well, it's hard to say it. I'll say that the um, performance contracting round two is an extremely appropriate time for all that discussion to happen because there's at least two and a half million dollars worth of HVAC work then. I can't possibly comment on what's going on in Coolidge. I have no clue. Yeah. I couldn't even begin to have that discussion. Um, no, I agree. That's but, the But other that is honor. absolutely yeah. relevant. And that's going to be a discussion about lots of factors cost is one of them. Do you want to spend more for this reason? Or, you know, what are the operational savings costs, whatever? Yeah. One of the things facilities has done in the last few years is do a lot of standardizing to minimize uh, replacement and, and equipment repair costs. So that ha they have to talk. I can't, I can't talk for them. Um, I, I, David Zeke had asked me from the climate committee, he asked me today a question about electric charging stations and I outlined in, in the downtown. And I outlined one of the capital plans, which is the above ground downtown capital, whatever it is, improvements. Uh -huh. There's three pieces below ground and one piece above ground. The three pieces below ground are moving faster on purpose because we don't want to rip up roads to do underground after we fix them. Um, but that's another, um, I, you know, I said we could go out and do stuff for electric start charging stations now because staff's talked about it for two years with the light department. But until we have sort of a master plan for the downtown, it doesn't seem to make sense to do that because we don't have to then rip a couple out. Uh, and that's only a year or so away. So that's that's that piece. So, you know, the, the long answer is um, to get involved in a longer term planning process is probably the best use mm -hmm. of the committee's time. But that doesn't mean that every short term thing can't be discussed and I can't discuss that with you. Yeah, it just so happens that the Coolidge need is sooner than this other stuff, which is planned for several years down the road, or a few years down the road. So, you know, we need we need, we need a, um, a new HVAC Coolidge, and, and you guys, I'm sure, you know, that's correct, and then we should do that. I guess the question is, how can, um, 
And again, we facilities might be able to have an intelligent discussion okay. here about what this committee wants yeah. and what the options are. I just okay. can't do it. Okay. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, yeah. it's not, I don't want to, I don't think we should just recommend the numbers without when on the Yeah, well, you're not being asked to recommend anything just yet. Because again, this one was pushed back to July. Mm -hmm. okay. not, not November. Right. And also, what kind of tiptoe line of design versus cost, right? So at the end of the day, um, like uh, Bob was saying, other things get put right. Well, electric gets powered off of, of natural gas a uh, hundred miles away, you know? So um, it, there are different arguments behind everything. It could be safety. Look at Lawrence. Look at different things that happen yeah. accidentally. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, I'm cli inclined to say I don't necessarily think, I think FinCom being all in that conversation is great. I don't think FinCom is the conduit um, connection between facilities and sustainability, um, just because that's a design. And, and it is in here about an OPM, um, you know, further down the line and, and gathering an OPM to assist in that process. And I think that that's, uh, that's kind of where that comes into play. Um, how you make that connection between facilities, whether we use uh, the FinCom to do that, I don't. I, I think that's a design conversation. I don't think that's a financial conversation. I think after the design, it becomes a financial conversation. But um, that that'll be more the select board and the town manager reviewing this design, this cost, this benefit, um, and then that being brought to FinCom to say, okay, from here, you know, uh, should we bring this to the town meeting, and which one should we bring? And if it were a larger building project, that's the permanent building committee that would have that discussion. It doesn't mean others can't. Right. They, right. You know, the library building project, uh, library uh, building committee had that discussion on the library with different sustainable options. Right. And they chose to go with cost first, you know, but it was cheap. So. And I assume our discussion is. tonight is really along the lines of whether we look to push this stuff out to 21 or. Yeah, trying to open more to 20 to stick with our 5%. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else on capital? Um, I'm going to circle back to your financial form planning and capital, but first I'll just go over the budget. Um, you know, it's, it's really not very interesting and not very different, <coughs> sadly, from the last meeting. The school department has changed some um, special ed costs and, and offsets, mostly the offsets. They're not sure how to put down the three days in a row. And there's a lot of uncertainty with the Senate's plan as what it means for Reading. Uh, I've seen an analysis that was not good for Reading. I don't know how accurate it is. It's the first analysis out there. Um, it is good for specialized though. It's not good for straight chapter seven and eight. Meaning, uh, meaning that <laughs> worse than now, that's virtually yes. Oh lord. <laughs> yes, uh, we're saying much more. Um, not better than now. Probably is fairer than worse. On the strict state aid piece. Yeah. On the circuit breaker, which is significant, it's much better. So that I honestly I forget the numbers, but if the state was funding seventy percent and it's out to eighty or eighty five, you know, the number of breakers cut hundred thousand dollars as an offset. So the special ed costs if they were four million and the offset made it three point five million, now they're three point three million. So there's some level of savings. And again, nothing's certain, but that yeah. element of all the discussion is good news. And, and it could be, um, you know, I really love the schools talk about it, but the way they budget is last year's circuit breaker and special, well, circuit breaker number is what they're using for this year because they have cash in hand. It's an actual known number, which is a good way to budget. What we're talking now that's uncertain is for next year. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of see that as a but right now, and I'm sorry I came in late. Um, I don't know what pension discussion you had in terms of pension cost, but if the higher number of pension is going through, and if you're willing to spend a certain amount more free cash, as I indicated, that you're looking at three percent operating budgets. So I have met with John a couple times on that, and that is a little tight. I mean, most other years, except for really bad years, we've had three and a half. So I'm not going to complain or whine, but I'm just going to say. 
to present, I thought my growth would help out. It's not going to. And do you think that's just some projects got delayed? So yeah. it's, it's just a the actual issue. status of the projects as of January 1st, the middle of the winter, yeah. we're just not there. And you can see with your eyes what's mm -hmm. going to be done by this January 1st, and then the next January 1st is even more. So there's definitely six figure projects coming for tax revenue. Um, the other meeting I had this week was with our health insurance provider. And um, the budget assumption we've made is, is good. Um, we just got our renewal rate for the retirees for January 1st that I haven't shared with the retirees yet, so I won't say that's good. And he said it's proper to budget a 5% health insurance underlying run rate plus a 10% prescription drug run rate. The combination is 7%. And that's what we've effectively done by we were at zero, but that's really a seven because we had such good results in the past. Awesome. I'm surprised prescription yeah. rate I'm has such a heavy weight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a big part. Wow. And 10% is kind of, kind of a big jump. So the, the health insurance budget in front of you is also reasonable. And, you know, we could do better if we had it for a few years. I don't think we'll do hugely better as in the past. But never knows. So I think all the assumptions around um, the revenues and the expenses are pretty solid. None of them will be so exactly right. I'm sorry, so right. you added up to 7%? Uh, and for health insurance, yeah. yeah. And that's what's in the budget, even though it says zero, more or less. Because, again, our baseline this year is about 7% too high. Mm -hmm. and we will save money this year. I mean, it's early in the year, but unless something weird happens, we'll be for the second or third year in a row. Uh, as we are planning to do in November town. Right, so it's almost up like some a decrease budget. in the base and increase right. in the base. Yeah, so November we're putting, I can't remember, 150000 taking it out of health insurance, paying for other bills. We'll have money in April, undoubtedly, to do the same if we have to. Um, the base is too high right now. But we didn't know that at April 10th before the deals had been struck and the renewal rate was given. So it's, it's pretty good news, again, for health insurance. We, you know, we're, we're in line to have the third reasonably good year in a row. Uh, and when you go back three or four years ago, none of us would really thought this was possible. It doesn't mean we should stop worrying about it, but it's awfully nice you know, that it happened. But again, baking all that news together, you look like ballpark of 3%. Did you discuss the pension number? The, the five, the the 20 whatever percent increase okay how did you interpret ray's memo it's not a regular stuff <clears throat> well you can ask the retirement board to revoke. Yeah, sorry what were you i didn't know if you if you discussed the I retirement discuss, oh okay i didn't discuss what ramirez was saying but we talked about that the retirement board accepted schedule k Right. Go into any of that. So, so the legal opinion we got today was a little hard to read. Sometimes Ray is a little bit gray. Uh, but it basically said the town has to do what the retirement board says in so many words. And you know, it's partly my fault the retirement board said you got a 20% increase because they said I think we can afford that. So now that I know that they have the final word, I might not say that next time. But I'm quite sure if income's not comfortable with that increase, and I'm not going to tell you what to do, we could ask the retirement board, look, you know, this is really not the best year to do this. Could we just cut it down, cut it down, whatever? And they may or may not. But they certainly will decide quickly, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I outlined my reasons why I thought it was OK. Um, I'm still willing to stand behind that, although well, there is less good news than I had expected since then. So, but you know, as you will soon learn from the town accountant, once she knows what the TOR says, free cash is good. So we're not cool. Right. So I continue to allow looking for opportunities to spend some free cash down yeah. for one-time expenses. Yeah. This is more than a one-time expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's it very is. enlightening. I had no idea the way that that. that, that Authority of the retirement board. Yeah, that's I know. I didn't need <laughs> Well, the, the letter more or less, um, the the first page more or less said that the state gives the retirement board the power to, yeah. um, if they vote on it, they essentially just inform the town is more or less 
how we're I normally very, very interpreted. Like it. I said, we are very collaborative. I usually bring back those funding schedules, yeah. discuss them, mm -hmm. while we're trying to figure out where it all fits in and where it might. But it's really early in the process too. So right. other yeah. things have come to light after we've decided that that might be a good funding schedule for us. And now we've already accepted it as a retirement for us. So, mm -hmm. but again, you can reconsider. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying you should, and I'm not saying I feel terrible about the decision, but. I thought it was ultimately town meeting to really decide. But again, this is by putting money towards pension, it's but it's spending it but not spending it. You're defeating the liability that you have. So it's like putting money in a rainy day fund in a bizarre way. Mm -hmm. like squeezing the operating to an extent. To a yeah. tight three percent. We can live. We can live with it. Neither one of us have done budgets yet, so we don't really know what it means. Okay. Do we need to have further discussion on capital here? Um, I said it. So what's what's the negative to doing looking at pursuing Coolidge? Of course. The negative. Um, in 2020. Yeah. In 2020. Um, just the idea that as of right this minute you'd have to use free cash to do that, and I we don't have to it. If you saw the Warren article, all the free cash that's proposed to be used is to offset revenue shortfall. Mm -hmm. So it balances. So it kind of all balances. Again. We're not spending any money. If you want to spend it, you need revenue. Oh no. Do you? I, I'm not yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know if it was also knowing just workload wise, we'd never get to a facility as this workload. Yeah. I mean, if, if income wants to encourage us to spend the Coolidge money this November, I have no problem with that at all. It's just we're spending money that is not certified yet. Mm -hmm. I just didn't mm -hmm. want to. But I, you're right, it's going to be there, no question. And facilities would prefer to have the authorization now just to be lined up for the summer better. Mm -hmm. They may get yeah. the summer by an April authorization, but they probably won't. But where right. well, that's actually summer. got some expected benefit yep. operating wise. I, yep, it does. I would like to see us both keep that in Yeah, if you we're all agree, I'm fine with that. I agree. Anybody have a different opinion? Because what I'll do is I'll change all this for next week when you discuss with the other the boards and committees, and that'll be the default town meeting November we'll one action. Just add that one back in. So the use of free cash will go to one four seventy five or something along those lines. Um, there's some use in there now. I forget it's, it's a couple hundred thousand. Oh, well, in addition to that, there's money in November to make up for shortfall of revenue, one hundred fifty thousand or some small amount. So yeah, it would be the million, and is it a quarter now this year? Sharon? I thought it was a million and a quarter. <coughs> the operating budget from last April's town meeting for this year, is that the number that was used? I kind of think so. I'm not sure. In, this, in the it September is. 4th memo, yeah. it was a million and a quarter. It is, so it's a million and a quarter plus 150 or whatever the revenue shortfall plus 225 or whatever the capital item is. So what's that bring it closer to? A million 625. Yeah. And so, do they? How far along is that project? Is that like just a, a placeholder that the HVAC for Coolidge? The, the two twenty-five. How, oh, how firm is that number? Is that just? Oh, the, it's no, it's a good number. Well, it's any. Like they have proposals on the table. No. Okay. no. So but again, they know the equipment. They've added something for time, the value of time. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of equipment's not going up or changing as much as labor. Mm -hmm. um, so it's probably a good number. I'll talk to Joe uh, tomorrow or next week and say that was done in November. Was that good number? He'd already said yes before, so we must have changed. And then for the discussion on the the, the surplus and the three hundred thousand performance contract. I don't know 
why we wouldn't accelerate it. And then back to the same conversation about just having a boatload of free cash that fits squarely into the conversation we're having about spend, you know, spend money to save money kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See, that, that's more of a next year budget discussion, but honestly, you could. Mm, no, I don't think there'd be a real reason to fund it this November. The facilities department's too busy. Mm -hmm. But putting it in for next year in the summer is fine. Yep. Next year, you mean for April? Um, putting yeah. it in FY21. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So starting yeah. July. Honestly, they're not going to get to it till after the summer. They, they're very busy in the schools during the summer, but just after that, they'll probably get to it. Is that something, do you want me to present that next week as 300,000 is now prioritized to be spent in the first, in the next fiscal year? I don't know what the rest of the financial form is going to say. I don't know. No, open mind. But do you want me, to, in other words, take three hundred thousand out of a future capital plan and put it in next year? Is that what you're saying? Sounds like we're yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, fine yeah. doing that. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Two FY twenty one. Okay. I'll just change all the other numbers to make sure it works out. <clears throat> In the conversation we need to have just the note you've made and i've made about an agenda for next yep. week no i meant yeah on capital no. operating yeah no no the the agenda so then the agenda i've got for the financial form away from tonight we've got in no particular order here but i just in my notes from last time the permanent building committee right correct uh we have and that's going to be a, decent, a good size presentation yeah, I know that 45 minutes. Yeah, I think it can be less. Depends on your questions, but I think he can do a presentation in less than 20 minutes and it's a question of how many questions you have. Chuck, do you remember how long he took in your meeting? Less than a half hour, would you say? Minutes. Yeah, okay. Oh. Okay. Where did he come from? Like all the tour of the schools and what they found on the stage? High, high level. level. High level. Yeah, stuff. very high. 30,000 foot uh, basically said things are in good order. That's yeah. really what he they, they didn't find anything that, you know, was a safety issue or a way or, you know, just the buildings are in good shape. Did they show you, because I have seen what they've done, it's a lot of work. Did they show you the template, basically, that they yeah. did for each yeah. Because I think, I think it's important for people to see that to realize how thorough they were. That is a, that's I, a very well-qualified board. Chair board. Sure yes. is. Because I did one of the buildings with them, and I was like, Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Which one? Wood end. Okay. I did Josh Wheat. I agree. You want to crawl into places that I wouldn't <laughs> Well, that's it. They're, they they remind me of like a bunch of mice going up and going, you know, yeah. And they all had their specialty, so they're exactly. looking at different things. No, it's a, it's a very qualified board. They yeah. did some amazing work. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're lucky. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are very lucky. Mm -hmm. All right, so permanent building committee, then we've got, you know, um, just kind of current budget assessment and look, looking ahead, right? You know, early projections. Um, and then which gets us to landing and budget guidance for 2021. Yeah. Uh, we have to vote the warrant articles. We took care of the retirement board tonight and the instructional motion tonight. Is there anything else I'm missing? Um, I just want to restate so everyone sees your income budget meeting schedule. Um, we'll also list the yeah. select board on the school committee just so it's in one place for everyone to see. And um, we had told town meeting that we could give some current capital projects updates at a financial forum. All right. yeah, the three the pre three projects that come to mind are clearly uh, building security. Um, right. Two. There was yeah turf two. Sure. And there was some discussion about the elementary space. Yeah, I'll defer some of those to the school committee. I, I've talked to John, but I, I don't know what the committee wants to do. Uh, we have we have some information we can share on building security. We have a timeline. It's a very complicated graph. We can at least bring people up to speed. 
we did slow down a little this summer because John was out, just, just to say that. Uh, but we have a good process, we have a good plan, we, again, there's a good schedule. Um, you know, as I've said in the past, I just want to be careful with details that we don't share, which is okay. So I, I don't know, I don't think any presentation that we make will satisfy everyone. <laughs> that was clear from last town meeting. Um, but we're certainly willing to make a presentation. So would we slot that in after by guidance or before? You know, whatever you like. Well, yeah, I feel like it's it's not the main point of the meeting, but we did say we would provide the community an update. So I think it's yeah, I think it's an important piece. Yeah. It feels to me that tell me what you think of the flow here. Open with ABC. one one proposal is open with permanent building committee go right into capital project update there's a there's a there's yeah. a progression there mm -hmm. um then the, the budget review projection guidance um warrant articles after that the budget meeting schedule update yeah no. it's mr robinson uh, bob you can disagree with me. we had a meeting uh, a couple of days ago was it yesterday it was yesterday it feels like a week ago <laughs> <laughs> with uh, the on the space study yeah. with the uh, consultant and actually there's been discussion since that meeting and so I'm going to meet with the superintendent on Friday morning but um, we may we do, may decide to do something at the financial forum around that discussion or make a presentation on okay. that. Uh, but we won't know. I will know that until Friday but be a part of the capital project update. Yeah. Just yeah. overall capital. So you have a school committee have some time there. Okay. You just gotta make sure that all the stakeholders, you know, you don't you don't want to drop something before other people know about it. Yep. So. yep. Okay. Did you want the meeting to start at seven or seven thirty? I think we yeah. talked about moving it to seven. Yeah, there's been a seven discussion, but then this meeting got out, so I wasn't sure. We could talk about meeting with the retirement board ahead of that. Yeah, yeah. That's well, whatever you like is fine. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I think that's what we did have to say. Yeah, I mean, historically, it's it's yeah. it's your meeting. It's really your availability, and historically, a lot seven. of you are coming out of Boston, still, and seven yeah, is too early. still feels like a healthy agenda to me. I might lead yeah. towards seven. Unless that's fine. Anyone has a different opinion? Okay. We got the room in the library reserves. Okay. So, yeah. so Jackie, I'll send this to you. Just yeah, so think it through. Is the things you have, right? You I thought that's low. You schedule. Yeah. Okay. And do you want to see this policy also? Or I'll wait till November. I feel like at this point we can wait. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a November meeting. Our melty yeah. wants to confirm that they're visiting you in November yeah. at night. I should ask again tonight. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go with everyone? Yeah. 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 Great. It's in November. Our melty visit. Yeah. Policy. Do we have anything else before minutes that anyone would like to discuss? Um, I had a quick question about the warrant that we put in here for next oh, week. Oh, yeah. Um, if you don't mind. Article 4, uh, page 18, and J92, police cruisers 38.5. Is that the two? So we came in. It's in, not even for one. It's not even for one. So, so the discussion got brought up, and yeah. we loosely hit on it that they need three, if I'm not mistaken, is what um, Bob, uh, two meetings ago? Yep. Um, they need three cruisers, but we decided to stick with the, the one. No. Um, I I think, yeah, there's already a number in the budget for three cruisers, but it's mm -hmm. rolling by 38,000. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how. Okay, right, great. It's just that cost has it's gone up 25%. Perfect. That's, so, uh, that was my question. Do you remember the underlying number? Is that really, it's like 90,000? Yeah, yeah. So this is, you know, another third on right. top of it. It was it it just four more. Four really quite surprising. Steel tariffs. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah well, I, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I wanted to yeah, make sure after. that that so number was enough. It does say cruisers. To be quite honest. Yeah. 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 I, I wanted to make sure that that, that, that was enough because I kind of. So I think a single cruiser is in the forty thousand dollar area now. So 
because I, what I think I remember hearing is what's in the budget does not quite buy two, and it was planned to buy three. Right. Okay. <coughs> Probably some more expensive than they have to Yeah. Sorry. Thank no, you. Of course. Mm -hmm. Do we need to review any of the warrants that we're going to review next week? Or, um, they're they're, they're fairly. Now, if you have questions I can't answer now, I can answer them by next week. Did that everyone look at the warrant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 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 That, that, that was maybe my, my biggest question. From yep. Warrants. I think a couple of Ah, yes. I want to put the surplus because that's right. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. So you do have the last year of prior year bill. Uh, article six is not needed anymore because I forgot to the policy. We don't have to ask you or town meeting anymore. We ask the select board. Mm -hmm. uh, article seven at this point we we'll have time with money. So yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> so and that right, was always Ian's. Right now, there's um, no reason to. Do anything on Article Seven? I don't think that's going to change. But you never know. So those two are gone. So Article Seven's gone. Six and seven are gone. Uh, eight is just the rescinding of the debt. The nine is the retirement board that you've done. Uh, Ten is a little tricky. It's, it's a giving a longer contract authority. Uh, and this is for a past situation. We, uh, no, I, this is just no reason to review it tonight, but uh, Article 11 is, is more interesting. It's the same concept, but it's a future contract. It, uh, the current authorization would be three years. Uh, we'd like it to be longer, maybe 10 years. But, you know, I've talked to Jane Kinsella as recently as this morning. And, I'm not sure we'll be signing longer than a three-year contract because the prices are absolutely out of sight right now. Um, there's a monopoly in the market, and the one vendor that's left is taking advantage of it. We, Sorry, we put which together, contract? Is this? this is Rubbish Hall. Oh, okay. So we've, we've put there. together 12 yeah. communities, and there's no buying power whatsoever because there's one mm. provider. Mm. Um, so we'll see. You know, things may change by the time we actually uh, go out to the by next uh, July 1st. <clears throat> but I still think we'd like the authorization in case I there's know, a favorable opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to change the bylaws to allow us to burn stuff in our backyard? <laughs> 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 June, June 2020 is not that far away. You have to ask the fire department about it. Uh, I did that as a kid. I have no problem. Uh, 12 is the senior tax relief. Fairly prescriptive. I don't think there's anything else you have to worry about except eight. Talk to Vanessa about one of these. One of these is the natural gas leaks. That'll oh, be an expenditure of money, so I think you should wait in. Um, it's a little different because two members sponsored the article, the whole board didn't, so they're going to have to try to figure out a way to explain this to town meeting or in writing in advance. Did the board consider it? Did they consider voting? Or? Um, the two members preferred to, I, I'll be careful what I say, but what I heard was the two members preferred to sponsor it. The other three didn't feel like they had enough information that night to make a decision, and so they closed the warrant with two members supporting it. But I, I believe every other member that wasn't these two spoke in favor of it conceptually. They went and they wanted to make sure town meeting understands that. But they're not opposed to it just because their name's not. What article is it? 17. You know, the idea being that national grid reports, self-reports leaks, and then fixes them, of course, maybe we need someone independent to be fixed. I, I don't know what leaks. No, so. Did you watch that call two weeks ago? Uh, it was one. I sat in on the um, client advisory committee, and if they deem it not dangerous, they're not fixing it. So, you know, you still see gold boards in well, every town that's That's not entirely them. true. They have to report to DPU, and DPU decides. Right. Wow. They, they have different levels immediate right. within, within X, yeah, three months, within right away, or 12 hours, and yeah. 24, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they are self reporting. You said so. you have active leaks that have been addressed, and um, I mean, we're not yeah. the only community, right? Right. Right. 
So we hire an outside person to check into this. Will they respond to that, or is this? Um, that's somewhat unknown. Yeah, I mean, it's like a waste of money. If well. And that's what the board discussed that night. Town Council had prepare, prepared alternative language, but these two members wanted to continue with this language. And I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I couldn't possibly know. But there, that's why I think some background here is going to be helpful. Right. And um, I don't know if it's going to be available next week. I'll ask again. The board meets Tuesday night. No. So, so no, there's no guarantee that what an independent person tells DPU will get to the bottom. There is DPU accepts information in a very specific way. I think if the consultant does it that way, it might be listened to. If it doesn't, it won't. And one would hope that this person will know that and use the proper equipment, the proper measuring, and so forth. But it's tricky. The idea is simple. Everyone more or less should say, yeah, we want to fix this. But to get it done, yeah. That's, that's the discussion that the board had that night is, you know, one of the members not on the list said, well, you know, is there any guarantee that we spend the money that, and find something that something's going to happen? The answer was no, but not at this point. But, I mean, you, not you. the town will hire somebody, right. presumably, I don't know if it requires an RFP at $35,000. No. Yeah. So um, RFQ, probably. Request quotes. I don't know how many people are qualified to do this work. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would, yeah, I guess I would just. Yeah, at least can be a ground market. Yeah. I guess uh, the only benefit to here is how they the daily operations and they find their leaks, the extent of their investigation, right? So that's what it comes down to is that when they go out to do the meter testing, um, they say, okay, this is within X amount. Um, how extensive is the current means and methods of reporting these leaks? Do they check the next 50 feet, whereas a consultant might check the next 50 feet and find? And mm -hmm. it's the what if. What if yep. nothing comes of it? What if something does? And I, 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 I can see where the, um, the pause comes from. Yeah, no, I'll say that if you remember, uh, two winters ago we had a leak on Charles Street, on around Charles Street, and it was zero out. Yes. I remember that, I was yes. standing there. Um, oh, National the Grid, and then they had the labor interruption, I'll say, lockout, whatever. Um, National Grid has been very responsive to Reading in instances like that and others. So we have a good relationship. They do good work in town. That's not the problem. Um, the problem is more of a generic one. I, you know, if you're asking my opinion, even if the thirty-five thousand isn't immediately legally used, it's still useful information to have. Mm -hmm. And we have legislators, and again, there's other balance. processes. Yeah. Right now, we don't have right. check and balances. Yeah, absolutely right. When this was discussed at the select board, was there any information introduced about other towns doing something similar? And yeah, something? I think maybe I don't know, Lexington or somebody was doing similar and others were thinking about it. I, I can't honestly remember the exact yeah. details, but yes, others were either doing it or thinking about it. One but there's no, there's no, you know, there's no track 34 record. towns have this done it and all found 75 times more right. leaks than... Right, yeah. Okay. No. Okay. The um, CAC has moved it on that. I don't remember that. I want to say yeah. said the end over the process of doing it, but I don't know. There's, there's a handful that are in the process. Yeah, they're in the, yeah. yeah, yeah but there's not a long process. track record of no. specific results. No, and they're yeah. probably all located around, like, Columbia's territory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just, I was just going to say, I think that was kind of the reason this all got started. <laughs> yeah. I know even though that really nothing to do with that. Yeah. And that's, that's all the articles. Um, I guess one thing I would ask is to the extent we, you haven't had a chance to read through them uh, carefully um, yet, uh, certainly by next week, one thing I'd like to do is as we vote them and then ahead of town meeting we decide who's going to stand up and report on them. To the extent we can, I think it would be nice if we could, instead of, instead of just solely iterating the vote, maybe give a sentence or two explanations as to the rationale behind the vote, or at least the, you know, if it was unanimous, or if not, just kind of give a sense of the, the, the thinking. 
uh, I think that's valuable for, for town meeting to hear, just a sense or two, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. keep that in mind as you read the articles and as we start to assign them and, and stuff like that. I'm not saying we have to do it, you know, but just to be, be nice. Right. We could. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what the yeah. yeah. discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I forget exactly when we're going to print, but it's pretty soon after your meeting in the financial forum because town meeting's just around the corner. So um, I don't need anything from you. It's not like there's a budget message and things like that for anyone. Right. Anything else for months? Nuts. Uh, second to last, sixty-two. of September 11th is presented in the packet. Second. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous 8-0. All right. Thank you, everyone, for working with tonight. It, it, we kind of shoehorned in here a little bit uh, between the last one and this one. Short notice. So I appreciate you having a good discussion. Yeah, we've got a lot. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second.